SpaceX is pretty famous for using development methods for their rockets that don't fit the development paths usually employed by other rocket manufacturers. Yeah. Hello, I'm Dane, and this is Dane Explains. Elon likes to describe SpaceX's method as the move fast and break things method. <laughs> it's garnered a lot of criticism for good reason, but so far it appears to be working because SpaceX has quickly come out way ahead of other rocket manufacturers. Will this come back to bite them? I think we can look to a surprising place to figure this out. Let me explain. Every time SpaceX is another mishap with one of their rockets, it makes all kinds of headlines in the news that usually don't cast their efforts in a good light. Then, Elon quickly posts on his own platform that they meant to do that. Of course, this is partially true. Excluding test to destruction tests, SpaceX doesn't plan to have any particular test vehicle have a rapid, unscheduled disassembly, as SpaceX likes to call them. Or RUDs. I mean, it's right there in the name. Unscheduled disassembly. However, they're expecting some of their prototypes to have a RUD. So, that's actually partially true that they planned it. That's what they like to call the move fast and break things method, which seems to have served them well so far. There are two bridges that I think typify the two different rocket design methods. The old method I like to call the Brooklyn Bridge method, and SpaceX's method I like to call the Tacoma Narrows method. You might be able to see why. The Brooklyn Bridge is over 140 years old and is still standing strong even though it's one of the most used bridges in the United States. Elon Musk has said that in engineering, there are two kinds of unknowns. Known unknowns and unknown unknowns. The latter is more dangerous than the former, because known unknowns are things you know you don't know, and unknown unknowns are things you don't know you need to know. Back in the 1800s, when the Brooklyn Bridge was built, John Roebling, the designer of the Brooklyn Bridge, knew he didn't fully understand the engineering that would be needed to build such a large bridge, since no one had made a bridge so long like it up to that point. So, it was a known unknown. In response, he designed it to be way overbuilt. Not only is it a suspension bridge, it's also a cable state bridge. Just to make extra sure, the thing won't fall down. The method worked well, and the Brooklyn Bridge stands as a testament to it today. The Tacoma Narrows Bridge... Well, they had to build another to replace the first one after the first one stood for only four months. When the Tacoma Chamber of Commerce started accepting proposals, engineers came up with conventional designs. The issue was, they all cost too much. Then, an engineer by the name Leon Moisef that name sounds familiar from somewhere. Nah, not a foreshadowing at all. Came up with an innovative bridge design that, on paper at least, was not only cheaper, but would get the job done. Well, you already know what happened. They went with Elon, I mean, Leon's design, which turned out of less staying power than a circus tent. The issue was Leon thought he knew all the variables, and he didn't. There was an unknown unknown particular to the shape of the Tacoma Narrows. The wind. It turned out that the wind just happened to create an oscillation on the bridge that also just happened to match its resonance. So the wind kept flexing the bridge, similar to someone pushing someone else on a swing. Although resonance does apply to rockets, this is not a video about that. So let's move on. The disaster informed the next design, which was built 10 years later and stands to this day. Traditional rocket designers use the Brooklyn Bridge method to design their rockets. They know they didn't know everything that can go wrong, so they overbuild the rockets to account for nearly everything that could possibly go wrong, and then every contingency possible when something does go wrong. This is, of course, expensive, and you will end up wasting a lot of resources and weight on many components that you probably don't need, but are too afraid to remove. Elon's method is more like Leon's method. Design a rocket that should work in theory, and if it doesn't, alliterate the design. That way, you only have the necessary components. This is where the bridge analogy falls down. What was that? Anyway, 
Unlike bridges, rockets for the most part have been comparatively disposable up to this point. After they're built, bridges are expected to get a lot of use. Unless you're talking about one of those cliché rope bridges, anyway. Rockets literally fall apart on their way to space. So, if you break one of those parts, it's not as big of a deal. As long as there's no humans on board, or it breaks after separation. This is what allowed SpaceX to develop reusable boosters, while at the same time making money launching payloads into space. If recovering the booster failed, they're going to lose the booster anyway, so it didn't matter. If they had overbuilt it to begin with, rather than improving the design after every failed attempt, then they probably wouldn't have had enough margin to make money launching payloads into space. Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin is also trying to recover boosters with their new Glenn rocket, but they're using the Brooklyn Bridge method of rocket design. So, they've been extremely meticulous with their rocket design, because if they overbuild it too much, it won't be able to get into space. Well, they've been working on the problem since before SpaceX even existed and haven't recovered a single orbital capable booster. Meanwhile, SpaceX has recovered their boosters over 300 times. The saddest part is, even when you do have a margin to overbuild your rocket, there are still unknown unknowns, which cause disasters you weren't expecting, like with what happened to NASA's shuttle program. They tragically lost two shuttles and their crews which is a loss rate of only 1 in 68, when it was anticipated to be as low as 1 in 100,000 by the shuttle designers. So the Tacoma Narrows method. Bad for bridges, good for rockets. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please press the like button. Subscribe to my channel and ding the bell to get notified when I post new videos. Also, please support me on Patreon to get extra content and special perks. Link in the description. The more people support me, the more time I can dedicate to making videos like this one. So, until next time, have a great week.